I'm Bernd van der Meulen. I'm professor of European food law at the University of Copenhagen, but mostly I'm a private consultant in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. I do teaching in several universities uh, in the world, and I have my own online food law academy. And on the practical side, I represent clients in court. I advise them how to follow food legal requirements and uh, help them create their strategies. So let's start with the session. How did it go? How did it feel going back to in-person conferences after quite a while? It was a relief to, to talk again to, um, to actual people. Um, online conferences are quite nice, but you only meet on a substance and you don't have the, the, the smaller exchanges uh, over coffee, etc. So I'm really happy to be alive and kicking in mm -hmm. Copenhagen. And then uh, you also gave your own uh, lecture. Yes, um, I brought in the regulatory perspective to the to, to the discussion. Um, we've seen, well, for almost 20 years now that um, regulators are struggling uh, how to classify um, uh, microbial cultures in the food legal context. And I took as a starting point that classification is not necessary. Mm -hmm. We have a food legal system that ensures the safety of all foods, not just the foods that fit into a certain category. Um, so when we discuss is it inside or outside uh, a category, um, we are talking about the way in which um, food safety will be ensured, not about uh, safe or not. And I explained that from, well, I think at least 2006 onwards, um, uh, authorities have been struggling to get cultures classified as uh, food additives. And there is a problem with this because the, 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 the category of food additives has been designed for chemicals, for mm. uh, synthetic substances that are used uh, in the food. They have not been designed for, uh, for living organisms. And just recently, authorities in my country um, have, um, uh, have taken a step to, to push, to create a precedent that they put pressure on businesses to um, submit applications for the authorization of cultures as, um, uh, as food additives. Mm -hmm. And uh, once businesses do this, and once it leads to results, either an authorization or a rejection, the precedent will have been created mm -hmm. that we can discuss food cultures um, uh, within the legal framework um, uh, of additives. Mm -hmm. um, I'm concerned about this, yeah. and I think many businesses um, uh, are concerned about this. Um, so I called upon those that are best placed to take the initiative um, uh, to create alternative precedents mm -hmm. within the um, food additives legislation, there is the possibility, um, there is a procedure um, uh, to, to, to have a decision on the, 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 the classification of uh, certain products. And um, I recommend to, um, uh, to follow this procedure with regard to certain um, mm -hmm. uh, food cultures um, to get a precedent maybe on the other side uh, as well. Um, the problem is, um, European Commission will only follow this procedure um, at the request of a member state. So businesses, um, business associations, maybe even consumer associations, um, they are well advised to talk to the national uh, mm -hmm. authorities, whether they, from the side of their member states, are, are willing to submit uh, such an application. Mm -hmm. And then because you know, we have the food law, but there is three kind of major um, groups of people that we need to think about. We, we're thinking about the scientists that produce or do research on um, this, these cultures to add to foods. There's also the business side, so the company that will ultimately uh, produce and sell the product, but then we also have the consumers, right? So 
from the scientist perspective, how easy is it to um, have your research in full cultures implemented in terms of the the laws? Do they need to be aware of some key issues that could stop their research going into the market? They need to be very aware. You indicate um, there are three groups of uh, stakeholders, uh, the scientists, the businesses, uh, the consumers. Um, the one cannot live uh, without the other. Um, if you're producing the food um, uh, not for consumers to consume, then you're living in a vacuum. Mm. And um, much of what currently um, is going on um, has the consumer as, uh, as a starting point. Uh, uh, consumers um, want foods to be, um, uh, to be more natural, um, to be um, uh, less chemical in, um, uh, in, in uh, constitution. And um, scientists um, respond in research um, uh, in how to make it happen so that businesses can provide the products to consumers that, uh, that the consumers want. Um, at any of, these, uh, of such change, um, uh, authorities will respond with a certain degree of, uh, of concern. Uh, they want safety. Uh, to be assured, um, um, so th they are looking for the, the the certainty that is provided by procedures, um, uh, by classifications, and um, their concern I is a um, uh, a burden for scientists um, because they would have to live up um, uh, to the requirements. Um, uh, to fulfill the procedure, to provide the evidence in the form that uh, authorities want, that the European mm -hmm. Food Safety Authority uh, will want. And unfortunately, these procedures are so heavy um, uh, in terms of effort, in terms of costs, in terms of time involved, that... Um, all but the biggest businesses um, are inclined to step out of the innovation as soon as um, uh, these kind of regulatory hurdles um, come to the play. Um, that's why I think it's of vital importance um, uh, to contemplate um, whether to follow the initiative of authorities to set the precedent that, that the additive context is the one uh, where we should look, or to create um, uh, mm. counter precedents. Say, well, no, um, uh, food cultures are normal ingredients and uh, should be treated as such, and their uh, safety should be assessed in that context. Mm -hmm. And um, one last question for you today. Um, as a, as a researcher uh, working in, in, the, in this area, um, do you think it's important for them to, to also consider uh, the, the, the laws as well as uh, the, the, you know, their own scientific um, uh, work? Your question um, it touches upon my identity. Um, as a lawyer, it would be difficult for me to say that the law is not important, or I should have chosen another vocation. Um, for the food business in general, for the um, researchers, um, regulatory often is, um, is a hurdle. Um, a hurdle that is postponed, that, uh, out of fear that the regulatory people um, only have one way that they can move their neck, and that's in this direction mm. and never in that direction. And um, ultimately, if, if regulatory people are not involved um, in an early stage, uh, it will become more difficult uh, yeah. later on. And uh, my, my message today was not only um, uh, be aware of the law, um, uh, comply with the law, but also um, uh, at this moment in time we still have the opportunity to um, contribute to shaping to what the law um, uh, actually means in this context. Um, so my 
call upon businesses uh, and upon researchers would be don't sit and wait till the others have gotten it their way, um, uh, but make sure that you set the agenda. Yeah, great, great. I think uh, that is an, is a very nice way to wrap up uh, this uh, small interview. Thank you for your time. And, My and, pleasure. and enjoy the rest of the conference. I certainly will. Thank you for your nice interview.